Mr. Prime Minister, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, what an honor and pleasure to welcome you to the fourth Belgrade Security Forum. Uh, I think all of us, the three organizers, the Belgrade Center for Security Studies, the European Movement in Serbia, and my own organization, the Belgrade Fund for Political Excellence, should be proud and, I would say, very satisfied that we managed, once again, to do something that was seen by many as a mission impossible, and bring together one of the largest, if not the largest gathering on the topics of international relations and security in the Balkans. And we should really feel happy as well. But it is difficult to be overjoyed today in the world we are living in. When a year ago, we agreed to the end of the third Belgrade Security Forum that we would like to mark the 100th anniversary of the beginning of the World War I with a specific conference that wouldn't be about history and built up by historians, but that would think about the present and especially about the future of Europe. The title of the conference still resembles uh, our feelings and hopes from a year ago. This is why we were talking about a new beginning, although we had a question mark. We were hoping that in this moment where we are now, we will be able to talk about the end of a very difficult century, probably one of the most difficult centuries in the history of the humankind, and that we will simply be celebrating the beginning of a new, even a closer, more friendly to each other, and in the first place politically and security-wise, much more strong Europe. Well, unfortunately, this is not the case. 2014 reminded us that 100 years are not that long period in the history of the humankind. And that unfortunately, the ghosts of the uh, previous times are still alive. This meeting here that started yesterday morning with an extraordinary academic event and continued with very interesting debates, almost until 11 in the evening, proves that there are people, there, are, there is a knowledge, there is creativity that should and could solve the challenges we are all faced with. So I must say, I was so pleasantly surprised that some of my dear friends, whom I'm not used to hear from, that they are optimistic, especially in the longer run, it's usually me, this eternal optimist. And then suddenly, they were talking yesterday in different sections, in the evening, different breakout sessions about uh, the place, the space for optimism. Of course, under the precondition that we put our act together and that we really do our best to get rid of those very dangerous ghosts that are still out there and that are in fact, shaking the future of this wonderful planet and for us, the most wonderful continent, our Europe. 
We also had a fascinating discussion, in my opinion, at uh, the session devoted to transatlantic trends, uh, which proved once again that we know how to think together about our future. Thus, I believe that this meeting here uh, will prove uh, that we are up to the task. It is the first major, also Balkan, gathering after the summit in Berlin, and one of the first such huge gatherings after the NATO summit in Wales. This gathering wouldn't be possible without, first of all, you who are sitting here in front of me, without our partners, our supporters, our friends. There are so many, and every year more and more, that uh, unfortunately I'm not going to go into the list. You can see the list of our supporters all over the hall and outside. Instead, I'm going to pay tribute to three women. Don't worry, it's not Sonia, Maya, and myself. Uh, we are only the organizers. I'm going to pay tribute first to Chancellor and Angela Merkel for her daring move to bring together the region in Berlin and as far as we understood, to start a process. Not only one meeting, but a process where the most responsible people uh, of our region will come together and try really to make this region a full-fledged European region, even before we become members formally of the European Union. My second tribute goes to Lady Ashton. Lady Ashton started her, uh, I think her first trip abroad was to Serbia, and she met on her own request with the representatives of the media and civil society here in this hotel. It was a good sign, quite unusual for a politician of that level. And Lady Ashton proved to be unusual without her stubbornness, her stamina, and I would say, uh, with a very uh, serious uh, management of her own vanity, she managed to bring together, of course, with the participation of Serbia and Kosovo, the Pristina and Belgrade authorities, she managed to bring together the Brussels Agreement and thus become the architect, one of the architects of the different Balkans. And my last tribute goes to her successor. Federica Morgherini was a fellow of German Marshall Fund, but she also identifies herself as the part of the Erasmus generation. This is the generation I'm hopeful will do everything to build a better world. And I'm sure she will be ready to be part of that endeavor. Now, before I invite Prime Minister Vucic to take the floor, I just want to ask you, use this opportunity to enjoy in your friends and make new friendships. And please enjoy beautiful, sunny Indian weather in Belgrade. Thank you very much, Mr. Prime Minister. Dear Mrs. Licht, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, with real pleasure, I accepted the invitation of the Belgrade Security Forum organizer to talk 
together with you today about the relation and position of Serbia towards trends that shape our surroundings and that today make geopolitical, economic, but also cultural reality in Serbia, Europe and worldwide. But first of all, I'd like to congratulate to the organizers of the forum, Belgrade Fund for Political Excellence, European Movement of Serbia and Belgrade Center for Security Policy for the big success they achieved by organizing this gathering. I would particularly like to say that we are all honored to be here, thankfully to the greatest energy of Mrs. Sonja Licht and I can say that uh, we are all profoundly grateful, particularly all of us from Serbia that we have such a terrific lady as Sonja Licht really is once again Many thanks to you, Sonia, for everything you are doing, not only for this country, but for the whole region. I'd like to say that it's not easy today to speak on and to say many new and dare to say important words on this topic, on this issue. When we speak about Europe 2014 today in Belgrade, I want to nominate the end of short-term tactical and political thinking within the framework of logics of four-year political tenures and to turn together towards long-term visionary and strategic thinking. I think that we have to run a marathon and not try to sprint with sick knees and tired muscles. It is not easy and long runners are usually lonely and they fight through true battles with themselves. Please confute me so that we can create critical mass ready to make a topic of the question of our future and to work together to make it real. Some might think that I'm saying something new and I have no doubts that there will be a lot of those who will find a way to misinterpret my words in the most defamatory manner. It's for their con conscious and I will remind you of some of my earlier performances when I was saying that it was our obligation to fight for changes in Serbia, fight not to have anyone saying us who and how we should or should not cooperate with and that we had to look in the future. Today I can only repeat those words as well as to remind of my plea that I sent the day to everyone in Europe. We do respect you and we are not asking anything from anyone in the whole world but that to respect us. I want to say it's a great speech, but it's, a long, it's too long and I'll do my best to shorten it a bit. When we discuss all the issues related to Europe, to Serbia's path to European Union, we'll find a lot of people in Serbia that will criticize that path. We'll find a lot of people that will ideologically and immediately say, yes, and formally confirm Serbian way to Europe. But there is something more and something much more important than that form. Something that is really substantive, something that is really essential to our country. All our remarks on Europe today, on relationship within EU member states on their relation towards candidate countries is something that is very normal. We do say even bad words to each other, but we do resolve the problems and we speak to each other like friends. We do understand each other. When we say that we don't agree with some that we disagree with some decisions that are being taken in Europe. Yeah, we can say that freely and we can criticize those decisions. But after all, we can be criticized and we are criticized by many EU countries whenever they are in position to say that we should improve our 
behavior that we should do something in a different manner, in a different way than we used to. I hate to say that there is something that has no alternative, but I wanted to say whatever we might say about European Union, and it's not a shiny depiction, I can always say that is the best possible choice of Serbia and for Serbia, no doubt at all. And Serbia, in the recent days, at least in the last five months, did its best to start and to do a lot of reforms which were not easy to be done. When you mentioned, dear Sonia, some few easy words, and today when you say labor law, it's only two words, but those two words were not mentioned for almost 15 years in this country, or 12 years, doesn't matter. When you say pride parade or something like that, it did not happen for 15 years, till two days ago. Although many of us did not agree with those guys, but doesn't matter. We'll have to secure, we'll have to secure them, we'll have to secure their freedom, we'll have to secure their choice, we'll have to secure their difference. And Serbia will face a lot of challenges in future. We'll have to do fiscal consolidation measures. It's something very strange that we'll have to tackle that issue and actually we are not guilty for that. Not Absolutely not at all. But we inherited something that we'll have to change. Absolutely, it's first of all our mindsets. We'll have to leave that self-management socialism period which is not leaving us at all, which is still holding us back. And that spirit is creating a lot of problems to all of us. Secondly, we're gonna do that not because we were under terrible pressure of European Union. No, they made no pressure on that. IMF, they made no pressure on that. World Bank, no. But I'm proud to say that we are the first South European country that will take these measures by itself. It is our desire to create a modern society, to create a better economy, to create an economy that might work. And we don't want to lie to anyone. Yes, we'll face a lot of problems. People are impatient. People did not accept, did not expect and of course, they, they don't accept easily from someone that just came to power and wanted to cut their salaries and some of their pensions. Yes, but it will create, together with new labor law, new privatization law, new bankruptcy law, new retirement age law, with new arrangement with an IMF that we're going to achieve till the end of the year, that will create better business environment that will create different business climate. More people from outside will invest into our country. And Serbian people will get more, more and more jobs. And at the beginning of mandate as a prime minister, I promised to myself, it was two weeks of preparations before that speech in the parliament, and I promised to myself that I would do my best. And I'm not going to think about next political mandate. I'll do my best to think about the future of Serbia, about the future of Serbian people, particularly about the future of Serbian kids. And I'm sure that someone in future will appreciate that, although I said to my friends today morning that no doubt I'm going to be the most hated person in this country very soon. But in future, I think that Serbia will be a reliable partner of all the countries in the region, of all the countries in Europe, 
and Serbia will be a part of European Union. We heard Johannes Heim's statements yesterday. There's no, there's no, no chances for Serbia to become an EU member in the next five years. It was not a huge surprise. We expected that decision. But anyway, we'll carry on with our reforms. We'll continue our EU path and we'll do our best to finish with all our obligations before the end of 2018, beginning of 2019, and then everything's going to be in the hands of some other guys. We have our own duties, not because and not for EU, but because of Serbia and for Serbian people. And that's why we'll have to deal with very difficult chapters 23, 24, which I hope we'll be able to open at the beginning of next year. No doubts that we'll have to take care of all the other chapters that are not going to be very easy for us to challenge, but when we show that kind of political will, I dare to say that we can do miracles, and these are not miracles. All the other countries have already succeeded on that way, and I hope that we'll be able to do the same, and even to be better than some member states. Sorry that we are not too humble, and we want to be competitive, and we want to be a bit better of some of member states. It'll mean that we'll carry on with our European path with no disappointments because of some statements that are coming from EU, because of that enlargement fatigue that is actually existing in European countries. I can say that to you here, to many people that are coming from EU, yeah, there is an enlargement fatigue here in Serbia as well. I think that it's very obvious. You can see that at every single corner in this country. But it doesn't matter what some of our people might think. We think that we'll have to go stronger, faster, and not to lose a single day without making Serbia a much better country than it used to be. Dare to say, this is security forum, that Serbia is absolutely committed to the regional stability, which I consider the most important political issue for Serbia today and for the whole Western Balkan region. When I say regional stability, I don't, th I don't mean and I don't think it's only an issue of regional peace. It's an issue of economical stability. It's an issue of stable political relationship. And I can add to that that for the first time after 68 years, prime ministers of Serbia and Albania will meet, at, it will meet each other here in Belgrade just in a month or less than a month. On 22nd of October, Ederamo will come to Belgrade, and not for two hours, but for two days, and I hope that we'll be able to create a different atmosphere, to start to create a completely different relationship between two, two countries. And I hope that we'll be also very able to keep stability in the whole region. I have some fears regarding Bosnia, but Serbia will always do its best to preserve stability in the whole region. We do support territorial integrity of Bosnia, as I used to say several thousands of times. And I hope that we'll all be very helpful to resolve that situation in the best and in a proper way. And we had some very important and we'll insist on our proposals on that meeting that Sonja Licht has just mentioned with Angela Merkel, with German Chancellor, 
and Serbia had several ideas. First one was to create customs union. It's, it's a better level or bigger level of cooperation and collaboration between SEFTA countries. Of course, I know that it wouldn't be so easy to deal with that in following years, but that's a kind of idea that I'm sure will be fulfilled in five, six, seven years. Doesn't matter who's going to be a member of EU, who is not going to join EU at that period. Next, our second of our ideas was creation of unity or association of youth from all the Balkan, Western Balkan countries and uh, that kind of union of real representatives of youth should react on hatred speeches on uh, all terrible and stupid words that we might hear from politicians and not only from and by politicians today but from all the others that can work together, that can get closer to each other, that can bring more and more ideas to their political leaderships. And that would be something what France and Germany created after the Second World War. And I hope that that idea, I saw that Chancellor Merkel liked that idea. I hope that all the others in the Balkans will accept that idea. And once again, economy is the most important issue for all of us. And that's why we propose the Serbia a lot of infrastructural projects that are necessity for this region. It will create better networking, better connectivity, but it will create better atmosphere among different people, which is more important. When we speak about railroads, we are not speaking actually about that. We are speaking about people connecting to each other. We're speaking about business, getting closer to different people. We are speaking about a new, new era of our relationship. And that's why we were insisting on that. And that's why we were so jubilant to see good reaction from all our partners from the region. And I can just add that we have to fight all stupid ideas in this region which will lead us to any kind of, any single kind of clashes. And I'm absolutely certain that this sentence might be said by all the leaders in Western Balkans, but we'll have to work much more together will have to resolve all the problems, we'll have to overcome all the hurdles that are still in front of us. And I don't see problem between Belgrade and Pristina, some of you would say Serbia and Kosovo is the biggest problem in the Western Balkans. At least that's a good news. That's a good news for Serbian people, that's a good news for Albanian people, that's a good news for the whole Western Balkans. And I dare to say that if we'll have a lot of your understandings, if we'll have your support, we'll be able to do, I call it, although if it's not our homework, but it's our homework not because something was dictating to us, but something that we have in a written form, which is very easy to follow, to put tick in a box and to say, okay, we did something, we still have to do that and we'll be able to provide everything into deeds. And reality and deliverance is something that is very much connected to each other. We used to live in a country and we were always promising that we would do that, we would do that. We all knew what our country needed and what all our countries needed in the whole region. 
but I think for the first time we started to fulfill our obligations. And you know that when we say that in this country we'll have to obey our constitution, we'll have to obey our laws, maybe personally I don't have to like gay parade or something like that, but my duty is to secure everything to those people and to secure their rights to gathering themselves, to rally themselves, to take a stroll through this city. And that's what we succeed after 14, 15 years, I think. And I want to say many thanks to people that I recognize as a, that I'm recognizing today as a people that are really very helpful to this country, that are Serbian citizens, and uh, I was not saying many good things, many things in favor of those people, but they were very helpful to us. And many thanks once again to Goran Svilanovic as well and to all the others, because those people, they had their idea. They were not leaning towards some persons. They don't say that something is bad in Serbia just because Vucic led that process, or they don't say something is good in Serbia just because Vucic led that process. That's something new in this country. That's a new spirit. And the fact that I was able to admit my mistakes, saying even these words, pronouncing these words, it's a good news for this country. And I hope that we'll have more, new, more good news and I hope that I'm not the type of guy that will speak today about big global issues. Yeah, we'll be on the right side regarding ISIS. We'll always support territorial integrity of all UN countries, including Ukraine, including Crimea as a part of Ukraine. But the Biggest problem for us is Western Balkan region. And what I can say, Serbia today is a pillar of stability. Serbia will remain a pillar of stability of the whole Western Balkan region. Although I know that many of you had a lot of doubts on that issue some months ago. And we'll do our best to cooperate with all our neighbors, we are not fighting for the position of leaders. We are not leaders. I don't care who's going to be the leader. We don't need any leaders in Western Balkans. We need good cooperation. We need better collaboration. We need more infrastructural, more common infrastructural pro projects to be done. And we need better cooperation between and among our people. And that's why we need your support. That's why we need your help. And uh, you from European Union count on Serbia. Count on Serbia because we do everything for the sake of Serbian people, for the sake of Serbian state, for the sake of Serbian country. And that's the reason why I'm sure you won't be able to refuse to approve and to accept Serbia as a full member state of European Union, maybe after these five years. Thank you once again, and I wish you terrific work, and I know that we'll all have the opportunity to be present at that kind of a forum. Once again, thanks a lot.